What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite for a full breakdown of the Season 3, Week 3 challenge here inside of MW3 and Warzone. We have brand new weekly challenges to go through and a brand new aftermarket part reward. As a quick FYI, there was a driver update as of last night, so make sure that didn't change any of your graphic settings because all of my settings are a bit out of whack as of today. Everything got set to high, and I'm getting very low FPS even in the main menu while in game. Be sure you guys check all of that out. But speaking of things to check out, be sure to go ahead and click on detonated.com for those who want more article coverage on multiplayer Warzone Zombies, Warzone Mobile, CDL, Loadouts, The Works. Got plenty of brand new coverage for those that want to read instead of watch videos, just want extra content on the mainline Call of Duty series and even mobile. But once again, we do have some brand new news roundups for Black Ops 2024 for those who want to stay up to date with what's going on with Treyarch's new premium title. Lots of stuff to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. Now, as far as in-game... Doesn't look like we have a playlist update as of yet. Maybe in the next 55 minutes. I have a timer on screen right now. We'll probably end up getting a playlist update of some sort for multiplayer and even Warzone. But we'll, of course, keep you guys updated over on Detonated's Twitter if new playlists do become available. There isn't a new event as of today, but there is a double XP weekend event, which starts this Thursday exclusively for PlayStation. Then Friday and over the weekend, it'll be for every other platform. But no challenge event this week. There'll be one next week for the Vortex Horseman Virus crossover, which is pretty damn cool. So a lot to look forward to as of next week when it comes to in-game events. But we do have brand new patch notes that I want to go over real quickly. So... These got added as of yesterday. If any new ones do get released as of today, I will go ahead and pin a comment down below and we'll go ahead and update a detonated article and detonated's Twitter with more information. But from Tuesday, April 16th, as of yesterday, for multiplayer, we got UIX. Maps widget in the quick play menu can now be scrolled to view all entries. More sniper will now display the correct icon in the kill feed. Emblems unlocked in MW2 will now be stated as such in the customization menu. Address various issues causing certain stats to not be tracked on the scoreboard in COD Caster mode. Resolve an issue causing the score to appear as O to O during the round transition in Gunfight and Search and Destroy. O to O, 0 to 0, you know what I mean. <laughs> Editing a loadout during a match will no longer cause the player to be given an incorrect loadout. Progression. Executing a player with the soul run will no longer grant more XP than a standard finishing move. That's a funny bug. Resolve an issue preventing the winner's perk challenge from tracking progress. Weapons and attachments. We have some changes there for the MTZ, Holger, M16 for MW2, which is interesting. So that's probably because we have an aftermarket part releasing for this M16. So cool that they buffed the weapon a little bit. We got changes there for the Ram 9, Striker 9, the regular Striker, which we just used to get prices on. The WSP Swarm, and then the Jack Maglift Kit for the Haymaker Shotgun. Also a change there for the Morse. There was a optic misalignment, causing shots to travel slightly off-center. Also got changes there for the Morse Hexer Optic. Uh, the ECS uh, Requiter Suppressor Muzzle. Also changes there for the EMD Grenade and the Frag Grenade, Tactical and Lethal. Remote Turret Kill Streak. Players no longer forcibly swap to their primary upon the destruction of an own turret. And then... Uh, limited time weapon evaluation there for Model for 3 multiplayer ranked. They've gone ahead and restricted the BP-50, Holger, MTZ, and then SMGs like the HR, the HRM, and the Ram 9. Pretty damn cool. And some bug fixes there across the board. Uh, an issue that prevented a limited number of players from accessing MW3 ranked. An issue that prevented Platinum and above players from being able to view their seasonal rewards. And an issue with the Seattle Surge 2024 camel pattern. That's multiplayer. For Warzone, let's see if anything got changed here. I'm really curious what we got. Uh, reverted the change that was preventing the C4 from being detonated mid-flight. Decreased intermediate explosive damage radius to 3.8 meters, down from 4.9. That's for the frag. And then we got some changes there that we already went over from multiplayer, but it also or it also impacted Warzone. The brand new change, that is. So, got a change there for the MTZ, Holger, M16. These SMGs, and then the more sniper attachments, and then for some small bug fixes... Fix issues preventing high trip challenges from tracking properly. So that's awesome because the actual camo, that's a lot of molecules that you can earn by winning a game of high trip. That was bugged last week. So they fixed that. Fix an issue where the signal intelligence public event would complete other hacking contracts. That was, I think, a, a champion quest bug too. Um, fix an issue causing mosquito drones to disappear in a player's hands when hit by a shock stick. An issue causing players to hear incorrect voiceover from biometric scanners. And an issue causing the amount of bot spawning into the bootcamp playlist to be inconsistent. So... There you have it for some Warzone bug fixes. That's it for all the patch notes, at least. Hopping back in-game, 
But folks, as far as the week three challenges do go, it's going to go ahead and unlock a brand new stock called the Jack Cutthroat. So Tamara posted this Twitter clip, as you guys can see. It's going to provide unrivaled speed and stability with various weapons in the game. Loving the fact that Tamara has been posting little snippets of the new weekly rewards. It's available for a number of weapons, as we're going to get to in a second. But what a classic looking iron sight, as you will see. Jumping into the challenges themselves. Week three, Jack Cutthroat, as you can see. For multiplayer, we do have get 15 operator kills after reloading with recommended SMGs. Five operator kills with the gun butts of a recommended weapon. Place top of the leaderboard three different times. Get five kills using lethals on operators who are affected by a shock stick. Eight operator headshot kills with recommended handguns. 15 kills against operators who are blinded or stunned with recommended SMGs. And then two operator kills in a row without taking damage with recommended SMGs five different times. Going into zombies. Five rapid kills 20 times with a recommended SMG. 50 melee mercenary kills with a recommended weapon. Again, mercenaries are AI, not the zombies. 10 mangler kills with a recommended weapon. 50 hellhound kills with a recommended weapon. 150 critical kills with a recommended pistol. And then 200 fire damage kills with a recommended SMG. 100 kills in a single deployment five different times with a recommended weapon. Going into Battle Royale, we do have the following. So these are Rebirth-inspired challenges. You don't have to play Urzikstan or any other map, but you could play other maps for some of these at the bottom. So in Rebirth, get five or, excuse me, 15 operator kills in the Northeast region, Central region, Southwest region, and Northwest region. So 15 kills in these points of interest, as you will see. Then towards the bottom, in Warzone, place in the top 10 seven different times, revive a teammate 15 different times, and open 75 loot caches. So obviously you can do these three in any Warzone map of your choice. You only have to do five of any of these challenges here, right? It could be two from one mode, one from another, two from another. However you want to break things up, those are the week three challenges. But as a reminder, for completing eight weeks worth of season three weekly challenges, you will unlock this animated camo, which will be the exact week before season four does begin. Pretty nicely in camo. Again, you have to do five different challenges eight weeks in a row for season three. But as far as the easiest challenges do go for this week, I'm going to say this one right here. 15 kills after reloading with the recommended SMG. That is so easy. Five operator kills with a gun butt of a recommended weapon. I mean, if you want to punch enemies, that's not bad either. That's really not that hard. But, hmm, headshots, two kills in a row without taking damage with a recommended SMG five times. That's not bad, especially on hardcore. You can get that done pretty damn quick. Top of the leaderboard three times. That's also pretty good. But if you're a casual and don't really get to top of the leaderboard all that often, that could be a little tough. <laughs> Punching enemies isn't that bad, though, but I won't I won't mark that one. Battle Royale, reviving a team at 15 times, you can easily do that. If your teammate just keeps going down, or if you guys, you know, maybe purposely go down. <laughs> easily get some revives there. Uh, zombies, I mean, these are really easy. Five rapid kills 20 times with recommended SMG. Super easy, we just get a horde together. Uh, 100 kills in a single deployment five times. No, that'll take you a minute. 200 fire damage kills with recommended SMG. You can literally spawn in with Napalm Burst if you want. So, I tracked some very easy challenges for you guys, as you will see at the top. Those can be done relatively quick. If you're a multiplayer god, then a lot of the other multiplayer challenges could be done in just like a game or two. But if you like to spread things out a little bit across different game modes, I kind of went ahead and pinged different challenges for you to go ahead and take advantage of. But just as a FYI, the brand new aftermarket part does fully work. Going into a private match always determines if the app itself is available to unlock after doing your weekly challenges. If the new app isn't available in private matches when the update drops, that just means it's bugged and you can't get it for the day. But as you can see, the Jack Cutthroat is available here in the stock menu. I'm gonna go ahead and equip that on both the M4 and the MCW. And yes, that does mean the app is available for a Modern Warfare 2 weapon. Oh, I guess the MCW doesn't have it. That's weird. Okay, let's try a different AR. Uh, MTZ? It's at least on the M4. Okay, it's on the MTZ. So I guess some ARs won't get it, or it's currently bugged on some of them. Taking it to the firing range. Let's see how this thing feels. All right. Inspecting our M4. I do apologize for the low frames. That driver update really screwed up my game today. <laughs> wow. Can't really notice too much of a difference, but... They did promise us better stability, mobility. That's the M4. So it's cool to see some aftermarket part support for the M4. But I'm going to call this an ultra stock because... Let's see it on this MTZ. 
It's probably gonna be the meta for season three or the remainder of it. It's probably gonna be the stock everybody puts on all of their best classes. This NPC feels a little bit faster than usual. I'm loving it. Plus with the classic iron side too. Yeah. The handling of the weapon feels a lot smoother than before. Now I know this won't do much, but putting some plates on the dummies just to get a bit of an idea of how the amp would work in Warzone. This is the stock here. Not gonna change your damage output, obviously, like another amp would, but still quote a test out nonetheless. Obviously, I don't have it unlocked, so I can't bring it into a public match, but let's bring it against some bots and see if we notice anything crazy inside a match of multiplayer. All right, chat, so it appears the Jack Cutthroat is also available on the AMR9. I guess the MCW is bugged, but we know the MTZ and the M4 definitely support it. So you're going to see some increased walking speed with this new amp. Again, it's probably the least anticipated after market part for Season 3. Nothing too special, but I'm sure when this is paired with some other god-tier loadouts in Season 3, you'll end up seeing some very strong mobility across the board for multiplayer and even Warzone. Obviously, there's some much more exciting aftermarket parts coming out in the next few weeks. We'll be covering all those as we usually do every single Wednesday. But it's cool once in a while to get like an optic or a stock. It doesn't always have to be this crazy conversion kit that drastically changes the weapon. But still curious if Atlas from Advanced Warfare is behind these aftermarket parts. That would be a pretty cool tie-in if they want to make that cannon. But yeah, put on some other weapons here. Free kill on me. Free kill. There we go. Can't notice too much of a difference. Obviously, I got to put on some got your loadouts to probably feel crazy differences. But just using the amp by itself as we usually do just so you can get a bit of a difference. I also love this map. This map's been out since the launch, but there hasn't been a 24-7 playlist added for it just yet. But once again, as a reminder, chat, for those who want to read up on... This weapon feels a lot smoother, though. You can notice that right off the rip. For those who want to read up on the best loadouts for the season, we got you covered over on Detonated.com. Pull that up real quickly so you guys can see. We also cover all the weekly challenges in the form of articles. So if you guys want to go ahead and read some of these challenges on the go or just get some info on what the amp reward is or what the reward is for that week, you're going to check out that article there. But yeah, for all the best loadouts, we got you covered here on the website as per usual. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the brand new Jack Cutthroat aftermarket part, which just released for several different weapons? It's obviously available for the MCW, MTZ, M4, and even the AMR9 SMG. Let me know what differences you notice when running this amp. As of today, challenges are pretty easy, but we of course have even better amps coming as of next week and the weeks to follow for the remainder of season three. With that being said, really hope you've enjoyed and have another video coming out for you guys later tonight. Peace out, everybody.